Welcome back to another episode of the Abundant Life Show. I'm Charles Todd, your host, and the co-host, the pro-host, <laughs> the abundant host, Angela Todd. Yes. Welcome back. What are we talking about today, babe? Always something good, <laughs> just about the abundant life and how we're going to get every element out of that. So we've been on this whole kind of stint of still talking about money, um, you know, going through not only talking about how to raise rich kids, but now we're really going to get into... Um, how that you give birth to millions in your own life. Okay, so giving birth, in my mind, is excruciating pain. <laughs> <laughs> it's nine months of... It wasn't that bad, though. I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Get this out immediately. And in the process, having your doctors help you, and you, no help at all, except don't take any epidural you can do this on your own we did it pushing though. it out yes we did it okay so that's what i think of giving birth to millions <laughs> well, and i will say there is a lot of that excruciating pain sometimes but how do you overcome the excruciating pain that's a good point <laughs> so and there is going to be some excruciating times when you're going through when you're building any business when you're doing anything when it comes with your career you know there's going to be ups and downs um you know, one of the things I think that I used to always try to teach our daughter Paris was that, you know, learn from my mistakes and don't repeat those mistakes. And when she would make mistakes, she'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I was like, okay, that's why we're having this conversation okay. so that you learn from this because the, the goal is, it's like, don't condemn yourself. Don't be, you know, pissed off or upset that you made a mistake, but learn so that you don't make those same mistakes again. So that's one of the things I think that we try to do with, you know, our listeners is, sharing our testimony, our story, what we've done in our own lives, where we've there's came from. what not to do. Yeah, there's, there's more <laughs> of that. You know, when we talk about going through bankruptcy and right. losing everything and losing our cars and have to move in with your parents and having no bank accounts and all that type of stuff, it's like, learn what we did so those things don't happen to you as well too. And now, <laughs> right. oh, here's the things that you need to do as well too to get to that place to be able to birth those millions right here are some tools here are some resources here's some uh, advice and you have to make it your own you have to take nuggets and figure out how to work it out work out yeah. your own salvation with fear and trembling <laughs> well and that's a really good point because i think sometimes you can get like this testimony from somebody of something that's really great that's happening in our life you know revelation talks about we overcome him by the by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and i always right. say that's like a two-part thing like the, what did the blood of the lamb do like overcame everything you know it overcame the curse of the law overcame right. sickness and disease overcame poverty but it puts right there side by side our testimony that those two are as as, as powerful as one or on independent as together so right. that's why the testimony has such great power in it is because people can learn from that but the thing that let me just finish with this that you don't want to make somebody else's testimony your blueprint Right. Like, okay, well, this guy had this health problem. He gave up caffeine and it solved everything. It's like the other person gives up caffeine and they can't even get out of the house in the morning right. after that, you know? So it's like you got to have your own revelation on something, but you get encouraged by somebody else's testimony and what they've done. And maybe there's some things that they did. And that's what, you know, us sharing what we're going to talk about today, some of these things that you can do and then you can pick and choose. Maybe I'm already doing some of those things, but you know that, I never thought of that. Right. You know, maybe that's something I need to incorporate into my own life if I want to have the success of being able to give that birth to millions. Right, so make lemonade. Yeah, I like lemonade <laughs> make too. It, make, see, make your own rendition of whatever that is for you. Yeah, sure. Some think lemonade's a margarita, so. I like tropical punch, <laughs> citrus blend. It's like I like a lot of different electrolyte Whatever flavors. Whatever lemonade is to you. Have you been Do drinking it. the electrolytes in the chocolate flavor lately? Because it's cold, been Here we cold. Go. Salty you know? lemonade. And yeah. I've been taking that in pickleball, and I'm making instead of taking cold icy electro drink, I've been taking hot chocolate, which is. I don't a know little... how you drink hot chocolate on the when pickleball it's, court when it's cold out. It's yeah, like I just, you know, still, it's not. It's like yeah. sitting in a duck blind, you're hunting, and you're drinking hot chocolate. But or that's whatever. the beautiful thing. You do you. And I'll do me. That's the point we're making. Yeah. 
Okay, so what what's our what are our points? Well, I want to focus on more today because I mean we're usually talking about you know how you can increase how you can have the abundant life. We're talking about spiritual, mental, physical, and financially. But I want to really focus on I think the mental portion of it today, okay. um, and more so of the mindset that I think that you need to have in order to be able to be successful in the area of your finances. You got to have a different mind than what most people think. You got to be willing to do things that other people aren't willing to do. And so that takes the, you have to have like a renewing of your mind. The Bible talks about renewing your mind with the word so that you can be transformed by that. So it's a transformation. It's a renewing part. I think you have to also do the same thing when you're, when you're thinking about your finances. It's like, how do I get that right mindset? So when I think about that from a spiritual perspective, who was the richest man ever in the Bible? And when you look at it, when you hear about theologians talk about him today, that he would still be even richer today than the current man. So if Elon Musk is the richest man, that he would be even richer based on the currency values of 2,000 years ago to today. Who Solomon. was that? King Solomon. Yeah, so what was his thing? So when he became king, he was what, a teenager, 18? I think, well, he was crowned, I think, at 14. He was a teenager. But I don't think he took over until he had to go through all of that, which, when, you know, when you're called sometimes to give birth to that calling, look at all the crazy opposition he went through and having to fight and, you know, being chased and them trying to dethrone him before he was even pronounced king. So that's a whole other topic. So what did he ask for? When God said, God appeared to him at drinks, he's like, dude, how do I do this? <laughs> like, how, how, do I, how do I be a king? Right. How do I act like a king? How do I govern your he people? Was, he was like, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord said, well, hey. What do you want? What do you want? What did he ask for? Wisdom. He asked for wisdom. Right. He didn't ask for material goods. He didn't ask for because, I mean, let's be honest about it. If God appeared to most people and they didn't really have anything, they say, hey, you can have anything you want, Angela. Anything. Well, the first thing be a lot of people. Well, I already spent 500 million. Can I please have that <laughs> restored in my account? <laughs> a lot of people can ask for money probably. You know, if they have a serious health problem, they're going to ask for healing, obviously, right. because I think, you know, one of the things we talked about is like health is your most important thing that you can possibly have, I think, in life. Because you can be a multi-billionaire, but if you're sick, flat on your back, you can't even enjoy your money. Right. So, I mean, and you can't buy that health. I mean, you can, you can buy things that would help your health and treatments and whatever it may be and get the best doctor, but that's not going to guarantee that whatever your issue is, is going to be completely gone and restored. But what will get you out of that is wisdom. Wisdom. Which is pretty revolutionary when you think about it. When, and we had talked about last time that the two biggest prayer requests in the church are for finances and for health. Healing. So what they really should be praying for is wisdom. Wisdom. Right. Getting out of that. That's and so, so, But what did God say to then Solomon when he asked for wisdom? He said, because that you've because asked Because you've for asked that, for this, I'm going to give you all the rest. I'm going to give you wealth and riches and so long So there's life your key. Ask for, Ask for wisdom. And the wisdom. Ask for wisdom. So that's the whole thing. From when we're looking from this from a uh, scriptural or spiritual perspective, Got to have wisdom. And what does Proverbs 4 and 7 says that wisdom is the principal thing. So in all you're getting, get understanding. Some versions say get knowledge. So how do we get knowledge? And what's the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Knowledge is expanding your mind's capacity to read, to receive, mm -hmm. understand uh, revelations of other people, revelation yeah. of the word, revelation of worldly principles and how they operate. Wisdom is something you get from God. Perfect. So basically, knowledge is to get something you got to do. Like you got to read a book. Right. You got to do something. You got to talk to somebody. You got to right. go to school. You got to do something to it. But wisdom is something that's just basically given to you by grace. Well, and it brings me to the AI era that we're in right now. And so in my opinion, I could go on about AI and some of the dangers. But AI is essentially the world's knowledge. Everything that's been input into an ecosystem of what people have done, what they have, whatever. It's a worldly word system that's been input into a computer that then transmutes um, information back and forth. There's no wisdom from God. It's knowledge of man, in my opinion. Although, 
wisdom from God into the knowledge of man has been inserted there, but God is still above all of that with his wisdom on what AI is. So anyway, I'm going on a rant of yeah, AI. Yeah, I like that though. That's, that's good because I actually used, I've used AI for a number of different things, for our business, for our profitable business. Um, I've used it for like when we're doing some uh, different types of writings for things for our nonprofit, for our, you know, our ministry work. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that I found that when you're trying to use it for like maybe some type of teaching or something regarding spiritual is that it can, it gets like the basis of it, but it doesn't get the depth of the spiritual meaning of it. Like right. it can take scriptures and stuff and formulate that and put it into a writing and do it very elegantly, but it, it misses like the spiritual. There's no soul in AI. It's good way to say it. Right. It's there's, just there's no spirit in there's AI. There's no spirit in AI. It's <laughs> there's just knowledge. It's a vanilla template for right. you to I mean, yeah, it can help spark some inspiration that you can then add soul to it, which is a great tool and a you know, like a bridge like we talked about. Like if you're gonna borrow or go into debt or if you're homeless or something is happening in your life or if you need medication, those are all bridges, but it's ultimately not your final destination. So I think AI can be a good bridge if mm -hmm. it's used accordingly. So let me ask you this. So we talked about, you know, your health and how valuable that is. Do you think that the wisdom of God can actually show you how to get yourself healed? Absolutely. I mean, that's what it's all about. So how would you go about doing that? If Praying. You something? Okay. Lock and, myself and, in the closet with the word of God and sit there and, okay, I'm listening. And if I don't hear, if I'm in silence and I don't hear anything, I will sit there until I hear something. And if I don't hear anything, I will continue to do so until I'm led to do something else. Or maybe it's not in that moment, but maybe someone will call me and say, hey, have you thought of this? Or maybe I'll open up my phone and then something will pop into totally random. And it's happened before. Some weird thing will pop up and it'll be like, oh, what is this? And so you, you kind of go on this little journey or I'll have a dream uh, sometimes the Lord will use names of people. And so I'll go to the name of the person and then I'll dissect that name and then I'll figure out what does that mean? And then I'll go to the Hebrew and then I'll find the root and then something in my spirit will go, ha. Ah. And when that peace of God comes on me, I know that I'm being led to the right place. That's sometimes how I'll do it. So that's got you your instruction on what you need to do for healing? Yes. Okay. And it's maybe that you need to do this or maybe eliminate that or, or sometimes it's instantaneous because if you can, I mean, your, your imagination is God. So mm -hmm. if you can see yourself healthy and thriving versus being sick, then you will be led to that healthy and thriving thing. Miraculous healing. Then. Right. Miraculous healing. And I believe that miraculous healing is done by what you see, yeah, not by what you, um, not by what your knowledge is, but by what you see. Well, if you, really wanted to get into relying on your knowledge to get you healed, like search the internet, like you have some disease, whatever. Let's just call it, say you got COVID and all of a sudden you're like, type in COVID on Google oh and I want God. to learn everything about it. And I'm, what are you getting? You're getting knowledge. Right. About but that. sometimes that could lead you in a wrong way because it will instill fear in you. Yeah, That's my point. That's where I was going. Too much knowledge can sometimes be dangerous or too much. Well, and that, that was where I was wanting to go with this. So the wisdom will actually overcome whatever knowledge, knowledge. no matter how big it is or how limited it is, right. wisdom will supersede the knowledge so that you can get that miraculous healing. Yeah, Because like som sometimes like if I have all this knowledge that like a doctor about it, then it just doesn't make sense how I could possibly be healed of this thing, but wisdom will supersede. And if you can say, hey man, God's my source by his stripes, I'm healed when you get your healings manifest. With and all seeing it happen. I mean, that's I like one of the Dodie Osteen when she was, she had cancer and Joel talks about this where, you know, she was putting up pictures of herself in her twenties and she was young and she was thriving and then she was going and praying for other people in the hospital. And I mean, that's a whole other subject is, you know, when you're suffering with something, how do you then help somebody else? Yeah. Um, putting your own aside because a healthy person prays for a healthy person because when you're full like you were saying before your 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 cup isn't just half full but when your cup is overflowing you can then help and heal and and get somebody else so if you're not 
in that overflowing, but you believe that you are and you're overflowing enough to go and pray for somebody else, your healing will come just like that. Well, it makes me think about Galatians 6 and 7, whatever man sows that he will also reap. So right. when you're sowing on right. helping somebody else get healed, you're going to get somebody's going to help you get healed. Too, and then when Job prayed for his friends, they yeah. all multiplied. Yeah. yeah. Pray for your friends, man. <laughs> okay. So we're somebody, I guess, needed to hear something on healing today. because we're really <laughs> getting off on the tangent on healing, but it's all good. It's like, it's still about the abundant life. So let's get back to giving birth to millions. Okay. So back to growing pains. So I think it's pains. the book of James that says that any of you lacks wisdom, let him come and I shall give it to you liberally. Is that correct? Remember, right. remember that? So it's like, if you feel like you're lacking, ask for it. Right. You know, it's just like salvation. It's like, you just don't get saved because you think about it. you. Like you have to ask as a believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. So you get saved. So God's not going to put anything on anybody that they don't request. And even though it says that he wishes that none should perish, people go to hell all the time because they don't ask for it. So it's the same thing in our finance. If we don't ask for God to bless our finances, he's not just going to put it on you. Same thing is if you don't ask for wisdom, it's not something he's just going to put on you because we're free moral agents. We get what we ask for. So the point is I want to make with that, you want wisdom, you got to ask. You and have then, not because then, you ask not. Yeah, that's, that, that's good too. And the thing is then, and once you ask, believe that you have it. Like if I ask you, hey, can you give me that bottle of water? And you give me the bottle of water. I have the bottle of water now, right? And now as I have to do, if I'm thirsty, drink, right? Mm -hmm. So what if I have the bottle of water here and I go, I'm thirsty, will you give me the water? Will you give me the water? Will you give me the water? Give me the water? Like, okay, dude, you're crazy. It's in your hand. You've already asked. You received it. So wake you, up, oh, if, thou at sleep. If you believe that you've received it, then you then have it. So then my right. declaration every day is, thank you, Lord, that I have the wisdom of God in the mind of Christ. I'm now, not. I'm therefore, not. Therefore, walk in it. I'm not going back and asking for something that I believe that I've already received. Right. I'm just making a declaration with my mouth because the Bible says that we need to speak death or life out of the mouth. So. I'm going to speak that life. I'm going to believe that I received it. I'm going to speak that over there. Thank you, Lord. I have the wisdom of God in the mind of Christ. And one of the other declarations that I make regarding finances is thank you, Lord, that I spend money by divine direction wisely and fearlessly knowing my supply is always endless and immediate. Amen. What am I saying? That not only am I spending my money with my wisdom, but with divine direction of the Holy Spirit. And I know no matter how much I spend, coming back because he supplies all my needs according to Philippians 419. So it's just putting you in a place of trust, not in even your own abilities of producing, earning money in your business, your job, whatever it is, but I'm trusting on the one, my one source. So let me ask you something. Here we go. <laughs> ask me. This could lead into another yeah. marital counseling session. Oh no, <laughs> please. This is one of your marriage rabbit holes. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It's not uncommon. I already know where you're going. So next subject. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're lost. I'm working on it. When you're lost. Lost where? Anywhere. So if we're driving somewhere and you're oh, lost. come on. Will you ask for directions? From you? Yeah. Typically, no. Okay, why? Because based on experience, when I do listen to you, we end up in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> And I would have to say ah. that is not an accurate statement. Okay. I would say when you listen to me, you prosper. Yes, honey. <laughs> See, yay. It's right answer. Years I learned. Okay. Okay. So where I'm going with this. Okay. Let's get to the point. Is not all the time when you are experiencing a loss or a deficit or something that you think you can figure out on your own, you will not ask for help. Is that a fair statement? Say that again. Okay. When you're experiencing a loss or a deficit mm -hmm. or you're unsure about something, you will think that you can figure it out on your own versus asking for help. Okay. Are you talking... I'm talking to you. Oh, you're this directly to me. I am to me. directly oh, I you were talking asking talking about everybody. No, I am saying sometimes you will not ask for help. I'm <laughs> guilty of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes I won't ask for help because I think I'll figure it out on my own. I don't need your help. I'll figure it out on my own, which 
I should be asking for help. I mean, the whole point is ask for wisdom and in all your wisdom, get understanding. So if you're not asking, you're not receiving. And sometimes you can go down a wrong path because you're not asking for help. You're not asking is what I'm getting at. Well, guys do that in general with directions, don't they? It's like, hey, yeah, but you can apply that if you're not doing it just for directions, you can apply it to. I'm I'm joking. Right. I understand what you're trying to say in life is ask for help. Ask for help. Basically. Summary, right? Right. (laughs) But how do you. How do you stop? How do you make in that moment? How do you just say, okay, I need to just stop and, and ask for help? If you're just continually doing the same thing without, you know, producing any fruit, you just stop and say, okay, I, I can't. Time this out. Is not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta take <laughs> a time not, out. It's not happening. But then, how do you receive help from somebody else? You know, like if I see that you're going this way. Hey, babe, why don't you just ask me for help? And you always say, if I can't find something, I need to come and ask you first. Yeah, because right? you usually put it somewhere where it's not supposed to be. So and Normally, and you throw it out. So oh, okay. well, there yeah, you go. if I can't find it, I know yeah. it's in the trash. Well, we come to the conclusion quickly then. Yeah, so. <laughs> so if you don't know, then I, love you, babe. Then I, then I threw it out. <laughs> okay, back on track here. <laughs> so we already talked about having wisdom of God, asking okay. for it, because he'll liberally give it to you. So then you can operate in and this. Don't be afraid to ask. You can operate in this supernatural level. I always like to say, you know, we're in this 3D realm here. You're in a 4D realm when you're operating in a spiritual perspective. You're like above the world. I always think about flying an airplane and looking down, you think, gosh, my house is so big and my business is, you know, this and that. And, you know, all these things, these problems sometimes I can have can be so big. And then you get an airplane and you like fly over and look at your house. It's like, it's so small. (laughs) It's like you're like a speck on the earth. You know, so it's like things aren't that big of a deal sometimes. Put it in perspective. There is a, I can't remember who it is, Earl Nightingale or I don't know, um, Proctor. I was watching one of his bits. What he'll do is when he's facing a problem is he'll put, he'll put the problem here. On, physically write out the problem mm-hmm. here and he'll sit back from a different part of the room and think, if I'm Einstein right now, how, how do I look at that problem? Because the problem is so small. When you remove it from yourself and you put it mm. outside of yourself and you look at it from a different mindset, that's good. there's a way to solve that problem. There's a million ways to solve that problem. Yeah. So. Well, and think about it from this perspective. It's like maybe a friend, a family member, somebody calls you, oh my gosh, I got this going on or whatever. And it's like, especially, for me, like when people, when helping them with their finances, because it can be very stressful, but when it's not your problem, like when I can look at somebody else's problem, is there's a very logical solution I can give them. Hey, why don't you, did you think about doing this? No, I didn't think about that. Okay, why don't you do this? One, two, three, or whatever. Oh, okay, great, thanks. Yeah. Because you're not involved from a, a mental perspective, and that's something else that I always like to teach our dogs. Like when you're dealing with business, even when you're selecting your partners to play, whatever it is, remove the emotions. It's and, so and think tough sometimes. Logically. And sometimes I think it's some harder for a woman. Of course. To do that. They're emotionally attached to just about everything. So you have to know when logic has to reign in certain areas. And it's you have to shut off that emotional part. It's not easy for everyone. Well, that's why I think what you said, you're basically kind of removing the problem and putting it here on the table. Right. I'm looking at it from a different perspective instead of playing the mental image of the movie in your mind of right. what's going on, right. you know, and trying to switch that movie to get it over here to be positive, to just get it out of your head completely and physically put it over here. I like that. That's good. So that leads me to something else I'm thinking about, another scripture that I have. So this is Proverbs 8 and 12. I'm going to read it from the Webster translation because it's not one that I'm really familiar with. Um, the, the description itself is, but I really like this particular version. It says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of ingenious inventions. And some of the, I think the King James says witty inventions and ideas right. that God is going to give you witty inventions and ideas. And what's what sparked this when you said something about problems, because what are most businesses, I mean, most businesses are either their product or service. They're providing one of the two, mm-hmm. most of them. Mm-hmm. And what do a lot of those services and those products come from? 
they come solving from, problems come from solving a problem we were just talking about right. chip wilson before we started the creator of lululemon and why he created the women's yoga pants because they were creeping up the crotch of the women so he wanted to make a a, a pant or a yoga pant that didn't creep right. and then he had his abc pants and he wanted to try to create a pants for man that didn't crush his balls that's why <laughs> abc b balls you know so right. he solved problems and built a multi billion dollar company on solving problems right. so, so be solution minded well yes but know that god is the one we're talking about wisdom will give you the ingenious idea for that business because where do businesses come from an idea right. i mean what are investors looking for to invest in businesses what are they looking for great ideas good ideas right. so if you can be the inventor if you can be the one to come up with the ingenious did i say that word correctly ingenious ingenious ingenious, ingenious <laughs> you know what i mean okay <laughs> invention guess right. what you got billions in your idea you got business, billions in your wisdom. You got billions in your mind. Then you have to ask for the wisdom to execute it because everyone can have a great idea, but if there's no execution behind it, then it becomes a total failure. And there's been a lot of those. But so. the, guy, the guys sometimes with money are the ones sometimes that are now lacking the creative ideas is why they're looking for it. Right. So it's like money is looking for you. Amen. I like that. that People are looking for your ideas that you have that God is going to give you. And that's something you can ask for. Absolutely. That's what I was going to I ask that. Money finds, money finds me. Well, and, and thank <laughs> you, Lord, like, give, that you give me witty inventions and new ideas. Right. And start meditating wisdom. on that. Meditating First on that. And so wisdom. when maybe yeah. then the next time that you see a problem, instead of just complaining about it, you'll get that wisdom from God to get that idea to actually create a solution to solve the issue and come up with a multi-billion dollar business. There's a lot of businesses, successful businesses that have gone through uh, multiple revisions like Formula 409. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine on the 408th one, he gave up. <laughs> well, how many times have maybe we've done the same thing, <laughs> but we didn't even get to 400. I was like, I didn't give it to 100. I got to 89, I said, throw that thing out. <laughs> Done. But in the process of coming up with 409 renditions of something that finally worked, how many people do you think told him he was crazy? How many projects is it going to take for you to pursue and do the calling that the Lord told you to? It's like Noah building the ark. <laughs> that boy was crazy. He was so crazy. His whole family disowned him, the neighbors, everyone, until he closed that door and they were all chasing him. And then he was like, who's laughing now? <laughs> sailed off into the <laughs> then he blue up. yonder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, they had on build the your ark. Back of the ark. You know, they put like a name on the back of a boat. Right. What don't they put on the back of Noah's boat? Just Noah? Or see y'all later? <laughs> see y'all. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be y'all. Yeah, exactly. G O O D B Y R T O O B A D. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. Too bad you didn't Too trust bad God. Too bad for you. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, said, so we started off with Proverbs 4 and 7, and all you're getting, get understanding or get knowledge. So, how do we get knowledge? We talked about reading books. So, that's something that I want to talk about now okay. is that the importance of reading books. I was just watching something on Elon Musk um, a couple weeks ago or whatever. And I'm constantly watching other people who are successful. Patrick Betta David and these guys and uh, Steve Harvey. And um, one of the common threads I found with a lot of these guys is that how much they read. And they all have this like suggested book list, like my top five favorite books. Patrick Betta David had, I read all of them. You know, Steve Harvey, same thing. Um, Elon Musk, what I found was uh, very interesting about him. I mean, this guy, he is a, um, an engineer. And he's also, I forget what the other thing that he is. Um, Humanitarian. Engineer, engineer <laughs> fierce, but no, I think it's in marketing or something of, of business wise. But when you listen to him talk, he's very knowledgeable. Obviously, he's very wise in what he's done, and he's built many multi billion dollar companies. I mean, people know him for SpaceX, for Tesla, Starlink, the Boring Company, Solar Energy, or Tesla Energy, whatever, five major big companies. PayPal? I mean, well, PayPal is what he started and what he sold to start Tesla. Still. So, yeah, that was another one. The um, point is that you know, he was talking about when he was a kid, he lived in Africa. And 
he didn't like playing video games because he got bored with them. It's just too easy for him. So he started reading. So after I read every book in the house, then I started reading the encyclopedias and I read the encyclopedias front to cover. Think how much knowledge you get from reading encyclopedias. I mean, was that part of the attribute to his success? And Warren Buffett, one of his part of his testimony, when he was bagging groceries, he was 19 years old, that somebody either gave him a book or recommended a book on investing. He read that book and he said, that was the point that changed my life right there. Because he read that one book. Right. You know, so the value of reading is so important. It's great. So, yeah. I mean, I'm constantly, I'm always reading at least one book. Sometimes I'm reading two and three books because sometimes I find like when I'm reading an investment book, it's like start reading it and then I start like, yeah, <laughs> boy, I'm trying to get through I'm this. like, babe, are so, you awake? Hello. <laughs> so then I'll switch and go to one of my like biographies that are interesting some, you know, about some rich dude or something. So right. then it becomes entertaining. Then I'll shift back to the investment book. Um, but the point is that to always You're be getting. doing yeah. something because it's also exercising. And one of the things that I said, like when I left college, like I ain't reading books no more. I ain't studying no more. I ain't doing none of that stuff no more. Well, I, I thought that, college is a flop. I didn't like it. It was a waste of time and money in my opinion. Right. And I didn't want anything to do with learning or reading. And that was not a good idea. But I quickly overcame that and started well, I then. I think maybe that's why. I mean, it was how many years? It was a spiral into debt and what is going on with my life. Being part of the system. Being part of the system. Yeah, so it's probably a little bit, I guess, of retaliation. Uneducated. Uneducated. That's why I couldn't say ingenuous. I didn't read enough. I didn't do <laughs> You always my, told your mom, I'm going to have a secretary I anyway. I so. did. She'd say, you need to practice your spelling. I was like, I don't have a secretary. I don't need to know how to spell. And then they came out with a word, has spell check. Thank you, Lord. So my subtitle is Angela Todd, secretary. That's, are you my secretary? Yes, I am. Oh, your secretary. thank you. I appreciate when that. When you ask me to self correct, but thank God for Word. Okay, so let's talk <laughs> about some books. Yes. Let's let's give some of our own recommendation on books. So yeah, from easy. from a spiritual perspective, and yes, we do have our whole book series, Money Mike and the Gang, that teaches parents or educators or whoever how to teach kids about finances. That's you know a big part of what obviously that we do. But one of the things that we've really put a lot of effort since COVID and we took the time to write the books is we wanted to give parents, educators, whoever, maybe grandparents, a tool to be able to teach kids how to prosper. That's why we have our books, Money is Easy, Saving is Easy, Giving is Easy, and Stay Out of Debt the with the Loan Shark. So we'll have some links in our in the cast where you could go and you can go to these books on Amazon, but those are great tools for doing that. So One fish, thanks, two thanks, fish, thanks three for fish, that. four. <laughs> Money is easy as one, two, three. That's those are my top recommended books. What's number two? Number two, if you're looking from like a spiritual perspective, I would recommend Kenneth Copeland mm -hmm. and The Laws of Prosperity. Kenneth Copeland's the author. Right. Just real basics on um, the basic laws. The one that looks like a bird. It looks like a bird. Is it, uh, with feathers because it has so many post-it notes sticking out of that book. Oh, my book, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm actually reading I just started reading it again because it's the first of the year. I don't know how many times I've read that book. But I was like, okay, I got I can't even get through the book. There's so many post-it notes. So I started kind of peeling some off and doing more <laughs> underlines, whatever. Anyway, it's, it's just, just one like of those. reading it's, the Word every day. It's one day. of those things, yeah. You could read the same scripture and get a different revelation because every day is new manna. Or you read it the hundredth time and you're like, oh, boom, right. like you finally get it or whatever. So and that's, that you know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the words of Christ, it doesn't say because, it comes because you heard it. Because you heard it, you heard it once. If you're hearing is plural, it's I-N-G. You're hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So the same thing, sometimes you gotta read books over and over and over, and like you said, then sometimes you'll get a different revelation. But anyway, Laws of Prosperity. Um, another one that I like, and I think this is one of Patrick Bennett Davis, is called Anassis, and it's the story of Aristotle Anassis, who basically, he married Jackie Onassis, how a lot of people remember him. Jackie Kennedy became Jackie Onassis. Uh -huh. He was a Greek kid who their family during war times was basically enslaved by the enemy. That the enemy would come into the towns, basically take the houses, take the businesses, plunder everything. Is that the correct word? Plunder? Mm -hmm. Like you take everything yeah. basically, put them into concentration camps or prison camps, whatever. And was they, he Jewish? Greek. He was Greek. Yeah, this is happening to the Greeks? I forget what war this was when this happened, but I think that he spoke a number of languages. So he was able to, the enemy basically used him to speak to um, the party they were fighting or whatever to get him alcohol, I think, was his thing. So they used him as a... As a, a little gopher? Yeah, ally or whatever. 
Anyway, he escapes on a ship at 16 or 17 and goes to Spain or whatever. And through that trip on the boat and everything else, basically nothing, this guy becomes a shipbuilder and becomes one of the most you know, wealthy men of his time. Um, this is back in the 1900s, you know, I don't know, 1940s, 50s, something like that. Started by working on a ship. He started, yeah, he started by well, saving his ass, fleeing, getting out on right? a ship. <laughs> <laughs> fleeing for freedom. Yeah. But using that experience then he, then and then he started working on a ship, wealth do that, based then, on a problem. And he went from building small boats to big boats to some of the most massive tankers, oil tankers of their time. Right. And not only, he was an international man who did business with countries around the world. He became one of the most successful men. It's pretty remarkable. And so just reading that, what, you know, we'll say, what is that, what is that important? Build it's your like, faith, build it, your faith. It, it, what it did to me is it, it expands my capacity to be able to, what the Bible talks about, stretching your tent post. Right. It's like this dude can do business with like five different countries. It's like, why can't I do business with five states? <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Which were, you know, our or one company five counties, national. five people, you know, you just. Our commercial real estate business is national. Sometimes I think, well, but we're only really specialized in Southern Cal. It's like sometimes I put limits in my mind that can we really be more on a national basis, even though we're doing national projects. Like I think a lot of times the limitations are right here. So that book will help you to kind of expand right. your capacities, what that one's for. Um, the other one is How to Invest by David Rubenstein. Like I said, we'll have links to these books in the podcast. Um, this is a book about over 20 something investors who all alternative investors who all have their very specific niche in investing. But what I found is that they are highly successful in their niches where most people are going to, a majority of people are going to invest into the stock market and mutual funds and stocks and bonds and that type of stuff. These guys get outside the box and are in these whole term investments and still became multimillionaires. That's good. So that helped me to kind of, once again, expand my capacity to start looking at, okay, what are there out there? And after reading that book, our last year in investing was one of our biggest years ever. And, it and got all you in, did was those. read a book. And that's and the, what's so amazing to read me. read the book and then it started it's, it came, asking though. questions right. and asking knowledge from other, other people. Wealth and then managers. Have, and... Wealth, a, asking for open doors for No Man's Shut and then you get an open door. And then out of a conversation that I wasn't even expecting that you get this opportunity right. and hey, there's this and that and it led into it's that. So good. So and it's, Read. I couldn't have done that, right. <laughs> but it got me thinking that knowledge got me thinking with then allowed the wisdom to work and then allowed the favor of God to open the doors and then boom. I so. love that. It got me thinking. That's the whole thing that we're talking How about. How many here is, lives are changed when they start to think? Another one is after Steve by Trip Mickle, I think you say it. So it's basically the story of Apple after Steve Jobs and Tim Cook comes in. Oh, okay. And it's just, you know, obviously Apple, one of the biggest companies in the world, and just hearing the story and kind of hearing how these guys interact in the background that you'd never hear these stories and how accurate they are, who knows, but it's still very interesting to see. They still have all the same little problems, you know? <laughs> Biggest company probably don't have much problems. They have just like they have the biggest problems they have, of all well, they time. Got I, I can't imagine logistic being problems and even personalities Elon Musk. trying to get to trying to get along <laughs> that right. type of stuff. So, you know, it's just you think, oh, they probably so much money and so big they don't have like any even personnel problems, but they did. <laughs> you know? Well, look at Paul. He's like remove this thorn. <laughs> you know, it just it was there and it remained. So sometimes you have a thorn and sometimes you just got to stay in your lane and keep doing what you're doing. It's like Jesus. How many thorns did that guy have? Come on. <laughs> a crown of them? <laughs> yeah, a crown of them. <laughs> okay, so those are some books. Um, you know, go out. There's all kinds of different podcasts. You can listen to people who are successful or giving books or just type in great books to make millions, whatever it may be. But whole bottom line is, Read. 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 There's a lot of great apps out there too. One of the ones that we've used when we're teaching our financial courses is Nerd Wallet. Nerd, Nerd Wallet, Wallet, Nerd is Wallet so has great. a lot of good so resources, great. not yeah. only on their websites, but apps as well too, from budgeting and different uh, financial calculators. Tools, and, resources, yeah, comparisons. So I think they, they, they'll do like uh, comparisons Links. on like credit cards and right. stuff. So you can uh -huh. get a lot of good information. And what I found is, um, you know, you can look at a lot of different sites, and I find that they're 
and we're not being paid by NerdWall or anything, and nothing's been done. This is just our personal opinion that I think that they're pretty consistent in their recommendations on stuff. It doesn't seem to be too biased right. on like they're being taken one way. Acorns is another good one if you want to understand some investing tools, banking. I think Acorns is starting to do stuff for kids, um, you know, and then you can just go to Nerd Wallet and even type in a search engine, you know, kids investments or banking or, you know, money and kids and it'll pull up some information. Okay, so we talked about how important it is to read how it's gonna help you to give birth to your millions because you're gaining that knowledge. So read, let's now talk a little bit about like um, the mindset of discipline and routines. No, I don't wanna know any discipline <laughs> and any routines. I wanna freestyle my way through life. Well, yeah, and you can do that a little bit. But Opposites attract, babe. <laughs> you're gonna need to have some structure to get through. And that's one thing that I, you know, anytime that I, it seems like when I'm looking at a video of somebody talking about, you know, somebody asked the question, well, how'd you do it? You know, how did you create this business? How did you do that? So when I hear them, it's like, they talk a lot about the routine. And a lot of, one of the common things that I've seen or read or heard about these people is, number one, that they exercise. Really? And so what are the reasons for exercising? You know, it puts you in somewhat of a, of a discipline or a routine. But the thing that you have to realize is that we're talking about the mind, right? Right. Okay, so when you exercise, your mind is gonna create endorphins, adrenaline, dopamine, all these things that like inspire you. So it's gonna inspire you from a chemical perspective in your mind. It's going to give you like this energy boost mentally. So people don't, they think, well, I'm just working out because I'm just trying to get my lungs health, healthy and my heart healthy and you know, I want to have some guns or whatever. I want to get rid of this belly or whatever. It's about the mind. It's about doing those things. So that's why you know, medical professionals suggest for people to exercise because they produce those things which are going to also alleviate stress. And stress is really the number one killer when you look at heart disease or all these different types of things, they say that the root of those problems is stress. So when your body's producing these hormones, these chemicals or whatever, it's going to reduce those levels of those stressful things or those stress killers. Therefore, it's going to in turn make you healthier because it's gonna eliminate some of those things. But the same thing it's gonna do for you in the perspective of your mind to help you to make, to earn money, to be successful in that, so. Is to exercise. Even if it's just exercise. walking outside, walking a block, like we talked about before, just, yeah. if you're not doing anything, just walk outside, walk down the driveway, walk one block, and then the next day you'll wanna go two, and then continue on, and then you'll be inspired to, someone will invite you maybe to go play golf or go play pickleball or whatever. I mean, it starts to. Yeah, I've been seeing this old dude on YouTube lately, <laughs> and he's like in great shape. I was like, and he's got like this long white beard and white hair, but he's doing like, tricep push-ups on the chair and he's like <laughs> doing yoga in the chair. It's like his whole workout's in the chair. I was right. like, I don't think he got that body on that chair, but it looks good <laughs> anyway. Okay, I believe it. You know, but the point is just do something. Get on your chair and do some push-ups. Get on the floor. Like you said, walk to the mailbox, you whatever. You do squats while you're brushing your teeth. I do leg lifts when I'm brushing my teeth. You're always doing that. Like we'll be at a stoplight somewhere and you're like in these things. <laughs> like when we're, me and Paris are with you and you start doing that, we're both like, oh my gosh, please stop. It's like, I'm moving. Or, you're at, like, I'm working the check, my mind. Check out stand. I'm increasing my uh, financial prosperity. So the whole thing you're coming against is what I'm trying to do to pull it on in. I'm going to encourage you. Here so. we go. Marriage Dude. counseling one. Too. You're doing the squats at the checkout. Just leave me counter. alone. Like, yeah. <laughs> two, three, four. Just everybody. think, oh, more money is coming to yeah, you, honey. Amen. I'm in agreement with do that. Do some squats right now. Let's now, go. I'm do some push gonna, ups. Let's, let's I'm get it. Drop kick you in five seconds. <laughs> okay. So, working out is going to help your mind. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Let's the do whole, it. That's the whole gist with that. Right. So one of the things I was just talking about, Chip Wilson, is still on my mind, because I'm reading his book right now. Okay. Um, I forget even what it's called. It's something, How Lululemon Was Created or whatever. But one of the things I found interesting about him is he was a swimmer as, uh, like, th th through high, high school. Yeah, he's like 6'4", I think. So he's really long and lanky. But he swam with girls 
a lot. So he used to hear about like their straps with their suits and all the complaints that they had. Mm -hmm. So that's what got him kind of interested in creating clothing. Cause then it, from before he was Lou Lemon, he had all these other clothing lines that he did and created and bought stuff in California, Mexico and all this other stuff. Anyway, what I found interesting about him is he went from swimming to then wanting to, to be a triathlon or tri triathlete, he, to do triathlons, to right. be a triathlete. Right. So why he was doing one of his businesses in the morning, he would get up and he would bike two hours, and then he would go to work. And at lunch, he'd run a 10K, and then he'd work until nine o'clock at night. And after nine o'clock at night, he would go and swim for an hour and a half. That is some kind of animal. It's like six hours of exercising. How successful is that guy? Six hours of exercising plus however many hours, probably 10, 12 hours of working. So he's probably 16, 18 hours a day. And he said, I'd eat as much as I could when I got through swimming, I'd go to bed and get up to the next day and go, I'll do it all How many again. people say, I don't have time to exercise? And that's where I was going to go with this. <laughs> you know, it's like- Just read a book. This read. dude, I mean, he's created one of the greatest athletic clothing companies- In the world. In the world. Billion, multi-billion dollar company. Right. And my point is, look what this dude did for exercising. So if, and, and that takes us different mindset to get into that place Absolutely, to be able to do that. Does. I mean, this morning we're traveling, we're at a hotel, you know, I was in the gym at five o'clock, I'm doing that. I'm thinking, man, a cup of coffee under the covers would be a lot nicer right now. It was, and I'll tell on. you it was, because that's where I was. <laughs> I was like, you know, but no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go do that. But then when I'm done, it's like when those endorphins and all that stuff are going, it's like, now I'm motivated. Right. And what I've found through the years that when I don't do those, that exercise on a daily basis, I mean, we've had a gym in our house for how many years now? 10, 10 years. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just something that's, to me, it's a necessity. When I don't do that, I feel like my production from a work perspective, like just being able to be productive working, right. drops dramatically. So people think, well, gosh, if I exercise, I'm gonna be tired. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. It's the yeah, opposite that's because true. you're gonna have Absolutely. all these things going on. And not only do you have, you know, we've talked about the endorphins and all that type of scientific stuff. You just feel better about yourself. You know, right. you just feel good. It's like I worked out, man. You feel like, you know, and if you can do it the first of the day, it's like you accomplish something. And I think for people who have like a really busy schedule, especially if you have family and kids and stuff, you probably better knock it out before anybody else is up because it right. might not get done. I like to work out in the afternoon because to me, it's like how chip took his lunchtime. I like to take that break in the middle of the afternoon because I can just go upstairs to our gym and I can still be on the phone. I can still watch teachings on TV. I got my own personal gym. So I'm in my own thing. So not only am I working on my body, I'm working on my mind. I'm working on my spirit because I'm watching, listening to stuff. I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm able to talk on the phone. I'm able to email. I'm able to multitask on, on doing that. So it's a time where I can still conduct business but it's like a nice break for me as well too. Plus I've been able to eat a number of times, so I feel like I have more energy, so whatever. My point, my point is this, whenever it works for you. Maybe you're single, maybe you have more energy at the nighttime, maybe you wanna work out when you're done at the end of the day. Maybe that's your way of relaxing and unwinding is to go to the gym after you've worked all day and you don't have a family or kids that you gotta to tend to. So once again, going back, do your own thing. Make your own lemonade whenever it works, but just do it. There's even, there's apps exercise apps i mean just open your phone and scroll like you were saying today at the gym, <laughs> the gym. <laughs> there were ladies in there on their phones doing some crazy little exercises um, and that's room aerobics so you could do any oh, kind whatever. of aerobic i mean maybe your... you got it maybe maybe their spouse was sleeping in the bed so they had to get out of the room so yeah. anyway well, the story was i went to the gym this morning the gym's not much bigger than a couple hotel rooms there's like three ladies in there older than me one was doing like ballet, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was ballet. God, One that's was doing awesome. her, her video without headphones with I don't know, some exercise dude. Oh, one more time. Come on, ladies, you can do this. I'm like, <laughs> she's like that. Yeah. And then the other lady's doing her thing. And I was like, God bless them. They're doing it. That's what I right. thought. You know, these all these ladies are like 70 plus and they're just doing it at five in the morning. They it's even like, have wall Pilates right now where you can get on the wall and, you know, you can go through door frames, do your squats, do your leg lifts, do your wall Pilates. It's all there. Just take five minutes. I did, yeah. when you were gone, I did squats and I did leg lifts. Oh, I so good. Yes, I know. I thought those I got warmed up. And then I walked downstairs. I walked here. <laughs> you take the stairs or the elevator? No, I walked to the elevator. Oh, okay. <laughs>
We'll get you some more later. <laughs> yes, I will walk later. Okay, so that's kind of discipline of working out and the benefits of working out and how that's not just gonna benefit your physical body, but it's gonna benefit your business. So what's your the scripture? Era. So of exercise benefit a little, but the spiritual benefits much exercise more. Exercise much I'm, more. I'm, I know I'm butchering that, um, but this is what I want you to get out of that. It didn't say don't exercise, say benefits a little. Benefits so there's benefit. The Bible says that there's benefit in it. It might not be the same as a spiritual because when you get the spiritual, right. obviously, like we're talking about, it's going to supersede. You're getting that 4D realm, which is outside the 3D realm. So it's always going to take you to a higher place. Which leads me to if you're not exercising and you believe you have no time, change your mindset like yeah. we're talking yeah. and see yourself waking up a half an hour early. See well, yourself exercising. That's the next one. Remember when I said before we start talking, I said discipline and routine. Right. So routine is the thing that is going to get you into that pattern of doing those things that are going to give you discipline that are going to make you successful. Right. Well, that's good. I like that. <laughs> I need to tell myself <laughs> that <laughs> 10 times every day. <laughs> and so when you think about routine, it's like, I always think about Rafa Nadal, tennis player, right. one of the greatest tennis players mm -hmm. of all times. And so people think like he's superstitious and he may be, I don't know. But when he goes out on the court, he like puts his bag in the same place. He always has a water bottle, an electrolyte bottle, whatever he, he has. He has to be facing the same he way. he goes like this. <laughs> Put it over here. It's like they have to be perfect. Right. He's got everything perfect. Every single time it's the same time. People think, well, he's doing that because he's superstitious. He doesn't want the thing to be that. I think it's about the routine patterns right. of making sure that everything is where it needs to be. Because one thing that I've tried to teach our daughter is that when you have that routine, like packing your bag, you pack your, your bag, your rackets, your paddles, whatever is here, your balls are here, your this is there, that, because you always know where your stuff is at versus right. if you just throw it all into one thing and then you get there, it's like digging through this, like where is this thing in my lipstick or whatever that I'm looking for or whatever. When you have a routine, it's organized. When you're organized, it reduces stress. We talked about stress being other. So when you can have those things that are going to help you to be successful and you know that you always have it, so that routine is going to help you to do that. So the same thing we were talking about early, whatever works for you in your exercise time, build it in as a routine right. so you get up. And that's one thing I think that leads into too is getting up early. It's like, I mean, we're... 3, 3.30, 4.30, every single day. I've done that for a number of years. And the Bible even talks about getting up early. I suggest that anybody who wants to be highly successful, wants to give birth to a million, you're going to have to get up early. Right. That's just like we're talking about. If you're married and you have kids or whatever, and you can't find that time to work out, you got to get up before everybody else. <laughs> you got to beat them to the punch. Right. You got to have that done. But that's also a time. That's the time I don't use for my exercise. That's the time I use for my prayer time, my reading the Bible, my watching teachings, that type of stuff. Even though I do that stuff outside of that time, I get my mind straight every day first right. before I do anything. Right. Before I do any work, before I work out, I got to get this right because I think that this is the most important thing to guide and direct you for that time of day. And like you're talking about, you know, asking God, you know, hey, God, I got these things going on today. I need your wisdom. I need your help in yeah, this thing. Yeah, help me this. wake and... up at 5 a.m. or <laughs> help 4 a.m. Help me get down there to the gym right now, please. <laughs> <laughs> What's the scripture? A uh, little sleep, a little, a little slumber, slumber, a little, a little folding, folding of, of the, the hands, hands and yeah. poverty will visit that man's house. Yeah, and it, it also talks about, it's in Proverbs, it also talks about like the weeds rolling, will be overgrown. Or rolling on the bed, like a door opening and closing. Yeah, like and the then, door hinge. Yeah, you're just you're just back and forth. You're, right. Where's it getting? It's getting nowhere. But then it also talks about giving an excuse, like the reason why he doesn't want to go out to work. There's a line, There's a in, line the in the street. There's a line in the street. I can't go to work. There's a line out there. I'll get eaten <laughs> up, man. It's like, what's the bottom line of that? It's like, quit making excuses. Well, and those superstitions and silly wise tales. Silly, and, silly wise tales. Yeah. So anyway, creating a routine. You know, you don't have to be as detailed as Rafi Nadal about how you put your coffee cup on the table in the morning and I put my eggs this way. But all those things, I've, I got kind of well, pretty quirky stuff with that. But everybody does have a routine. Everybody has a routine. Some so the don't. The question is, is it a good routine? Is it a good routine? Is it producing fruit? If your routine's not producing fruit, then change up your routine. Good. What's so how, how, do, how do you go about changing a routine? 
what would you suggest? I would say first meditate on what you want. If it's, if you don't have the fruit in your life that you want, start meditating and seeing yourself with that thing. And then you will automatically move into the direction of it unfolding. Okay. Here's another suggestion I have. So like when I, in the past, like I went to school to be a dietitian, help people with the diets and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I would, when somebody would ask me for assistance and, hey, can you help me with my diet? Can you help me with my supplements? Very first thing I would always say to somebody is, write down everything you put in your mouth for two days. And some people are shocked by that revelation because they don't realize all the crap they're putting in their mouth. Yes, and everywhere from the fluids that you're drinking to the food you're right. eating, everything. And be honest with you, because if you're not honest with about it, I can't give you a good evaluation. Right. Because one of the things I learned with helping athletes around the world is that their diets are so different. Like helping a kid in China and he's eating fish for breakfast, fish and seaweed. I like, look at his diet. I was like, what the heck? It's like, <laughs> how do you eat raw fish at 6 a.m.? It's like, I eat that at nighttime maybe. They don't have access to other things. Well, so and, that's, you have to and, do with and other what, countries what, have right. only access to certain foods. So my whole point is I can't make a, a diet for a guy in Switzerland based on what's available in America. Right. So I had to see what they actually had, not only available, but what were their normal eating habits? Because what I don't want to do is just like, completely turn somebody's diet upside down to something that's not even feasible or something that they're not even used to from a certain but perspective. they don't have access to. Because they won't be successful right. at it. So it's a process of getting people there. My point is this, before you do a right routine, before you make up a routine, write down your current routine for at least a day and just see where you're spending your time and then take that and then make some adjustments to it. I would like to ask how many people are playing games on their phone? How many hours are you spending on your phone playing games? Oh, you're getting tough there now. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Can you take ah, five minutes of that time and exercise? And while you're exercising, you can actually play the game. Well, so you can actually target two and one if it, you're addicted to the every game. Every person in the gym this morning was on their phone. Right. In some way or another. One lady's watching the video, another lady's, I don't know what she's doing. I'm listening to motivating vi videos. I listen to Patrick Breda David, I listen to Andrew Walmack. You know, I'm doing a lot of things. Um, people are on their phone, so you can, like I said, you can multitask of that. So, yeah, if you face, what do you call it, surfing on Facebook, flipping on Facebook, what do you call it, <laughs> scrolling on Facebook, I don't know. When you're on Facebook, do some, do when some, you're on your phone, do, do some, something do different. some Angela Todd squats. <laughs> That's the whole point. Okay. Like, you know? I like that. And do sometimes some Angela I, Todd like, squats. The last yeah, time we were you. traveling, when we were down here, there's this guy in the gym that I saw. It's like the gym is interesting from a public perspective. That's why I have my own gym. If you want to learn a lot about people, go to the gym for five minutes and look around. This guy, <laughs> the half hour that I saw him in there, he was stationary on his phone for 20 minutes and worked out 10 minutes. <laughs> so it's like, and you're like, uh, can I use that bench? You yeah, know, whatever. I know. So, but point, point is, you can multitask that. You still, if you're, and I saw something the other day that. Teenagers or kids spend an average of eight to nine hours a day on their phone. Yeah. Woo. Makes sense. Wow. Okay. So, in closing, <laughs> I'm going to give you one more tip to birth millions. What's that? Joshua 1 and 8. What's that one? Go ahead. You know the scripture. Joshua 1 and 8. You shall meditate on this book day and night, and then when you do that, it will make your way prosperous, prosperous. and then you will have good success. And you'll have yes. good success. Joshua went in. From okay. a spiritual perspective, once again, what is he saying? He's saying, get the Bible out, read it, meditate, meditate on it. Right. Yeah, do do that. That's going to make you prosperous and good success. So right. the the whole thing, and I kind of want to wrap this whole thing up around, is that you know, we, sometimes we want to leave the spiritual aspect out of birthing millions mm -hmm. or having money, and especially people who have religious beliefs or traditions and think that you shouldn't even have money. Right. It's like, then you've got to do the whole thing. You've got to basically work on reversing or erasing poverty spirit. Oh God, that's a whole long episode on its own. Right yeah. But anyway, when you're meditating on what the book actually says, that Jesus became poor so that you would be rich. Yeah. That he came to give you life and give it more abundantly. Yeah, that he gives you Deuteronomy 8, he gives you the power to get wealth. So, to why to establish his covenant? Right. So, why would he give you the power to do something to basically 
prove his promises are real if he didn't want you to have it. Because as a child, you are in the kingdom, and in the kingdom are riches and glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Well, what's, what does Revelation talk about when you go to heaven? What are you going to have? Mansion, streets of gold, all that type of stuff. It's like, so and then, whether you want to or then, not, you're going to be. But the Bible talks about praying for to have heaven on earth. Right. I, I will take my heaven on earth. I will if you don't want it's it, choice. I'll take yours. <laughs> it's a choice. That's how I want to end it. Right. That, it's all a choice. Right. What do you want? What are you going to ask for? What are you going to believe for? Right. If you want the wisdom of God, ask. He will freely give it to you. You want to have a success from, you know, having that knowledge when you talk about Proverbs and all you're getting, get understanding. Right. You got to do something about it. You got to read. You got to do some things. You got to get a routine. You got to get some discipline. You're going to have to take some action in order to do this. And that is how you birth millions. That's it. Until next time. Peace.